mates I use after plating you have this which is called blue or clear it's nice kind of provides a natural finish kind of a I don't know the lighting in here is so horrible but uh, anyway you can kind of see how it's just that it's quite natural the yellow which you're familiar with and the black now the yellow is probably the easiest and most forgiving for me at least. Um, again, surface prep of the steel is the most important. I mean, being able to get a reflection like that of my fingernail, I mean, that's that really helps. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the case of this, I mean, this was rusted, but these are 50, uh, well, 1965. I mean, these are these are old parts, you know? So they're actually pretty decent for what they are. But the smoother you can get that these pieces, the better the coating will be. And I find as much amperage as you can run and not burn the plate provides the nicest, thickest, smoothest coating. You can't feel this obviously, but I mean it's very smooth. Part of that is making sure that you filter your solution really well. If you don't, it becomes you get some roughness if there's impurities in the solution this is smooth like it had been sanded and I didn't um, really the only prep I did these was uh, I ultrasonic clean them dried them media blasted with a uh, you know just glass bead and then uh, you know kind of washed them off uh, soaked them in an acid salt which is you know in this case sodium fluoride and that was just kind of to Activate the metal, clean off any tiny rust that might be in the cracks, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's pretty good for a 50-something-year-old piece, I think. But anyway, those are the three types. Now, the yellow, I normally, if, if your pH and the strength is about right, you're looking at putting it in there 15, 20 seconds, maybe at the most. Too much, and the chromate eats the zinc you know in order to bond and uh, I only dip this for seven to ten seconds and the black is the longest um, being close to 25 or 30 seconds in there and so you really need a very thick layer for the black um, you'll get patchy uh, if it's if your zinc coating is too thin and that's simply because the, the chromate has eaten what was left of the zinc off. Oh, and I do not plate castings. This is just, you have to get them super clean, man. You have to get them really clean, and then to activate them with some sort of acid. That's pretty much the only way to do it. You can't see the iridescence very well on these, but it's pretty extreme on the on the castings. They look fantastic. I'm not bragging, I'm just, <laughs> just saying, you know. I mean, I've tried plating some castings just for experiments, and it looks fake. It looks like a grade 8 bolt. I mean, the original castings looked like this, and that's really what I've, I've strove for, was not to make them look the best, but to make them look the most original. And I mean, that's as original as I can get it. That, that greenish tinge with the iridescence coming through. And uh, your rinse water is important. Make sure you clean everything off. Otherwise, you know you'll you'll get some weirdness. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Check out these. These are cool. Small block board, three two. They came out pretty nice too. These were from 1965. Anyway. I'm done rambling, but making some progress.